And now let me uh, leave the whole stage to um, Sejal to uh, summarize the whole day, wrap it up and give us the key takeaway uh, messages. Wonderful. Thank you, Reem, and thank you, everybody. This was an incredible presentation. I come to understand that we've had over 400 participants. Um, this has been very rich, and we hope that you can continue to take these dialogues back to your countries, back to your communities, and we still have another day to go. So um, what I want to first do is give a summary of the key takeaways. Now, Reem, you asked me to wrap up the whole day. I think I could be here for another hour, but I just want to share some of my favorite highlights and the themes that we've heard throughout the day with our, with our guest speakers and the breakout sections and all. I think maybe one of the overarching themes is really strength in numbers. Um, and I think we heard this very clearly from Carmen, from Tanya, from Rod, and from uh, the breakout sessions that I also attended that having the voice of multiple organizations come together um, as well as across stakeholders between patients and clinicians and, and, and policymakers, generating that sort of excitement en masse is really important. The second thing is to really create that dialogue for discussion and platforms. In many of your countries, the, the challenge has been stated that there isn't really those channels. Well, you guys can create the channel. And I think we heard um, some really good remarks from Derek from a posse about how they brought together these different stakeholders to have that dialogue, to really communicate. And, and from Carmen, who also said, you know, stakeholders who kind of maybe usually looked at each other suspiciously, suspiciously saying, wow, this is really nice. We're all together in this room. And I think, again, there's not many organizations like you guys that can really bring people together because you really are at the center of it all. I think the third thing is to really know your customer, as Jeff had said. Stakeholder mapping is a theme in one way or another that I've heard throughout the day, whether it was Tanya and their very deep efforts in Australia and Rare Councils Australia to really understand who are the politicians who are favorable, who are the politicians that um, are, are understanding of the health ecosystem, maybe those that need to be better informed, what are the, their key motivations, that kind of mapping is, is so critically important in the country to really understand not just the policies and the process, but the people behind them. And that's going to make for a much richer dialogue. There's one point that I actually found very interesting that Carmen also brought up and, and came up, um, I think, also in this presentation is about the translation of global commitment to local action. And it could be even national commitment to local action that for many early stage um, uh, patient advocacy groups that might not have the yet the maturity, the breadth, the experience, being able to sign on to the national political commitments, the global political commitments, and again, unifying with other patient advocacy groups, like-minded groups that just want better for the patients, um, that can be very, very powerful. So again, I think this is a really rich discussion today and I could probably list 10 other points and sorry if I missed any, any extremely salient ones. Um, but I also wanted to just take the time to say that uh, tomorrow is gonna be a similarly exciting discussion. We're gonna talk about something very topical to many of us that have been living these last two years virtually as we are doing now. And that's really the central role of digital solutions now. In, in, in healthcare and what is it that patient advocacy groups can take from this newer digital world that we're living in. So one of the sessions for tomorrow is really focusing on how can you run patient organizations virtually or in a hybrid format. And I'm sure there will be some very nice examples. And I think this is at the top of the mind of many organizations who maybe mostly done their most effective campaigning in person and have been forced to go virtually, but there's benefits that come with that. And the other a topic that we're gonna be talking about in depth is really on um, leveraging uh, sort of the patient voice in the co-creation of digital health solutions. So this is, again, we want, we've been seeing so many different apps and solutions and health tech companies out there. Are they adequately 
taking in the patient voice, do they really understand your experiences and you have a role to play in this? So that's gonna be a very, very rich discussion for tomorrow. And the last part, and it's also very exciting, is the APIS Innovator Program. We have uh, received many, many submissions of innovative PAGs, innovative NGOs that really, um, you know, really highlighted the creativity and the passion that many of you have, as well as the, the strong, credible pre uh, and professional impact that you are having. So we will be hearing from five finalists. I don't think that the winners will be announced tomorrow, but we invite you to stay for the presentations of the finalists. It's gonna be a really great event and we will close with that, but the discussion will continue with APIS uh, day three and day 365. So with that, I'm going to uh, close today's event and invite you all to the networking hall, which will be open for the next 30 minutes for you to um, network with myself, with my fellow co-council members and, and, and your peers as well. So please do join us uh, networking and, and have a nice day uh, wherever you are. Thank you very much.